It was supposed to be the start of a bright new chapter. Tejano star Selena Quintanilla Perez was working on her English crossover album, Dreaming of You. Following the success of her four Spanish-language albums throughout Mexico and Latin America, but before she could finish her record, Selena was shot and killed by former fan club president Yolanda Saldivar on March 31st, 1995. She was 23 years old. Selena may physically be gone, but the essence of who she was still permeates our culture today, 25 years after her death. It's not just her songs, but her sense of fashion and style, too. Since Selena's death, there have been everything from Selena-inspired clothing and makeup lines to tribute albums, concerts, musicals, memorials, Barbie dolls, wax figures, drag shows, and various other art forms celebrating her life, including an upcoming series from Netflix. When Selena passed away, I told my family that I was going to try to keep her memory alive through her music. Selena's father, Abraham Quintanilla Jr., recently told People magazine, and 25 years later, I think we, as a family, accomplished that. Here, we take a look back at the days leading up to Selena's death and explore her legacy today. How did Selena die? A month before her death, Selena was at the height of her career. On February 26, 1995, she performed with her band Los Dinos for more than 60,000 people at the Houston Astrodome in her iconic purple pantsuit. A few days later, she attended the Grammy Awards for a second time, where her fourth studio album, Amor Prohibido, was nominated for the Best Mexican-American Performance. She was also recording I Could Fall in Love with noted songwriter and producer Keith Thomas, in Franklin, Tennessee. And outside of music, Selena was looking to expand Selena Etc., a boutique brand that she launched the year prior with stores in San Antonio and her hometown of Corpus Christi, Texas. But in early March 1995, Selena and her family discovered financial problems with her fan club and fashion brand. They accused Saldivar, who was promoted to manage the boutiques after her successful work with the club, of not sending fans items that they paid for, as well as embezzling $30,000, the Associated Press reported at the time. Selena tried to recover those records on a few separate occasions and on one such attempt at a Days Inn Motel in Corpus Christi. Saldivar shot Selena in the back with a 38 caliber revolver. The bullet shattered an artery in her collarbone before exiting her chest, the effects of which also negatively impacted her brain function, according to Associated Press. Several motel employees later testified that Selena came running into the hotel's lobby after being shot and was chased by Saldivar. She gave Saldivar's name and room number before she collapsed and was rushed to Corpus Christi Memorial Hospital, where she was pronounced dead. Following the shooting, Yolanda locked herself in her pickup truck in the parking lot of the hotel with her gun for over 10 hours, finally surrendering after the long standoff with police and FBI. This testimony was in conflict with Saldivar's defense that she shot Selena by accident. Saldivar was found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison, though over the years she's maintained her innocence and filed for several appeals to no avail. The sudden loss of Selena was so devastating that many couldn't believe the news was true at first. Maria Aguirre, 
a receptionist for Tejano Radio Station KQQK at the time of the singer's death. I told the New York Times that calls from fans poured in as news of her being shot spread, many of whom were calling to confirm that Selena had died. They cannot believe it happened, she said. It's almost like the feeling when John Lennon died. She was the queen of Tejano. What happened to Selena's family? Selena's family, Abraham, her mother Marcella, her siblings Abraham III, and Suzette, as well as her husband Chris Perez, are all alive and well today. While Abraham III, Chris, and Suzette were part of Los Dinos, only Abraham III and Chris went on to keep making music and form new bands. Suzette manages the family's entertainment company and studio, Q Productions, that her father also founded in 1993, and where Selena recorded music herself. The studio is also home to the Selena Museum that the family built, in response to thousands of letters mailed to them by fans expressing their desire to have Selena's memory shared with the public. Suzette has also been working closely with MAC Cosmetics on their second, Selena Collection, set to be released in April 2020. And the Selena Foundation that Abraham and his wife Marcella run to help children in need has partnered with local groups in Texas to bring life events honoring Selena, such as the Fiesta de la Flor. In 2012, Chris released his memoir, I'll see that again. In 2012, Chris released his memoir about his relationship with Selena, titled To Selena with Love. And just this past February, Selena's father shared on Facebook that he finished co writing his own book with Nancy De Los Santos, who was a co producer on the 1997 Selena biopic starring Jennifer Lopez that catapulted both the late singer and the actress into global recognition. On the 20th anniversary of the Selena movie in 2017, Abraham and Suzette sat down with Entertainment Tonight to reflect on Selena's legacy. She had this beautiful personality and this amazing talent, Suzette said. Combining all that together, I think that's why we're all still talking about her. Later that same year, the family was present to unveil Selena's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It was reportedly one of the biggest crowds for an unveiling of a star ever seen. Today, we celebrate Selena's legacy. Selena remains not only one of the most beloved but one of the most successful Mexican-American artists to date. The posthumous release of Dreaming of You in July 1995, her record label combined her four English songs with earlier Spanish-language hits and covers, sold 175,000 copies in its first day alone, a record for female artists at the time. A month later, it debuted at number one on the Billboard's Top 200, and up until 2018, the album spent the second most weeks at number one on Billboard's Top Latin American charts. She broke barriers within male-dominated Tejano music, a style that combines such genres as folk, mariachi, and cumbia, while putting her own spin on it. This allowed her to appeal to both her Mexican and American audiences. While Selena was not the first or last Latinx or Hispanic artist to cross over, her accessibility remains a unique example and inspiration. Between Netflix's upcoming series, Max Collection, and the planned books and albums from the Quintanilla family, a new generation will soon discover all that Selena was able to do while she was alive, and what she continues to do in death.